So how do you go about building the ultimate man cave? A pub shed. See me walking around on the boy about town that you heard of. See me walking the streets on the top of the world that you heard of. So welcome to my pub shed. What we'll do now is we'll take a little look around it. So, the big question is, how do you build a pub shed? Well, first things first, you have to decide where you're going to put it, have you got room, and what size. They are what I consider the fundamental um, aspects of building a pub shed. You know, um, have a look around your garden, um, have a measure up, see what you can come up with size wise and then once you've got that together, then start looking for what type of building you want. Now, my criteria was I had a patch in my garden that was four meters by two meters, and that is what I had to base this shed on. Um, you do not need planning permission for a pub shed as long as it doesn't take up 50% of your total area of your back garden and it doesn't exceed 2.5 meters high to the eaves so as long as you are not breaking any of those two rules you're good to go I particularly had a little look around on the internet and I went to some garden centers and had a look because I wanted a log cabin and a couple of builders and that, who I know told me to go to dunsterhouse.co.uk. These guys specialise in log cabins and apparently um, they are some of the best on the market. So I got in touch with uh, Dunster um, and believe it or not, they didn't have the size I wanted, the four metres, but two metres. So I said, you know, they had like four, four metres by 2.5s and three by three by threes and all different sort of sizes like that. And I sort of said to them, it's no good. I, I said, what size do you want? I said, look, I want four metres by two metres. And I said, I don't care what styles. I've got different styles like Rhineland, Avon, all that sort of thing. And I said, don't care what style. I just, I need the size to fit the area which it can fit in. And I said, oh, we'll get back to you. And about half hour later, a young lady phones me up, back up, and she says, I've had a word with a factory out in uh, Poland or out, out, out in Eastern Europe where, where they actually manufacture these. And she said, they can do a four by two metre one for you, uh, but you've got to have 45 mil walls, which I wanted anyway, because they're different thicknesses of the logs. 45 mils, the thickest log um, wall they do. Um, I said, fine. Um, and I had, you know, go ahead, give them a deposit. And it takes about, about sort of six weeks before it's actually delivered to you. So, which is quite good. And it went from there, really. Um, I built it by myself. I was actually thinking, do I need someone else? Uh, these these uh, sheds they just slot together so we'll put a couple of photos up now and you actually see from what the pack form to see it sort of slowly sort of taking shape um, so we'll we'll put some um, photos in in now you can sort of see the little stages and then we'll get back to the other stuff So as you can see from the, the few photos there, 
you know, you've got to deliver it in a great big sort of flat pack and then you start to build it and it's just basically, it's like Lego, it's like slot together, you know, it, it's, it's so easy to build. And uh, I actually had it right, up to roof line within four hours on my own. You know, it's not, it's not uh, strenuous work, it's just grab a bit of wood, slot it in, grab a bit of wood, slot it in, you know, and you know, it's quite logical as well, it's, you don't need real expertise in DIY to um, erect the, one of these Dunster houses, you know, just a bit of common sense really, and follow the instructions. Um, I'm lucky because I sort of come from that sort of building industry, so, or an industry where I go into a lot of builds, and yeah, it, for me, it's, you know, I just, it was easy. Um, fully glazed double double glazing um, um, the doors and the windows all double glazed um, felt good felt on the roof and then you got to stain it all up um, that sort of thing so uh, put a couple of videos in um, now of obviously when it's took shape and the various sort of processes we did to stain it up so take a look at them now Next, once it up, it's up, and it's all stained on the outside, you have to start on the inside. Now, obviously I'm going to need to make this a bar. So, corner seating is a major part, seating and bar. So, uh, I've got a couple of uh, pictures, which I'll post up now, of the bar and the corner seating, which, believe it or not, come from Dunster as well. They actually do the, the, the corner bar seating and a couple of different bars. So I purchased them in the package as well. So take a couple of uh, little video, um, the pictures, take a look at the pictures now, and uh, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> so once you've got shed up, your log cabin up, your bar in, your furniture in, <laughs> you need things like electrics. Now, I'm a qualified Sparks, so I did my own electrics. Um, if you're not qualified, please get a professional to do the electrics. Um, I would say to put the electrics in your in your cabin um, would cost you around eight hundred pound on average. That's what I you know. By the time you get the armoured cable from your consumer unit out out to your uh, your cabin, you've got your little consumer board with an RCD. Now that is one of the most important things you must have in a, in, a, in an outside building. You've got to have an RCD. Um, and then I say. In a lot of cabin, you can't really. It's hard to hide the cables, so I've done it all in 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 plastic conduit, you know, for, for to get my cables around, in, in, you know, my sockets and my lights and my switches. And then obviously because of the industry I'm in, which is security, electronic security, I then obviously I've got it alarmed up, which I think you want need need an alarm in here. Um, I also got CCTV. Um, I think they're, they're big factors that you must have, you know, you're putting all your drinks in here, you know, all your booze. Um, it's an outbuilding, um, and you know, these people, they, they like to target sheds and that, you know, these people at night. So I think security is a major factor that you need um, on your pub shed. Now, all in all, you're probably looking at with, you know, your CCTV, an alarm, um, you probably look about another 500 quid so it's not cheap to do you know the initial sort of my pub shed just the initial what I purchased the materials off of uh, Dunster House he was looking at sort of three and a half thousand pound and then you've got your electrics well lucky I only have to buy the bits for that I can do that myself uh, same with the camera same with the alarm um, that's still pushes me up it, buying it, just buying the bits and then supplying without supplying you know any labour that's just buying the bits because I can do it myself 
another sort of 500 quid. So, you know, you're looking at like 4,000 um, pound. Obviously, you've got, to, you've got to supply, you know, pay for labor to erect your shed and um, to put your electrics in and your, your CCTV and your alarm, then you're probably looking at, um, on top of 4,000, you're probably looking at about another 1,000, 1,500 pound on top of that, I'm afraid. Um, so they give you some rough ideas of sort of budget costs. I do stuff like you want to decorate your shed and that. So automatically I went out and I got myself um, a perfect draft machine, a, a crook sub, so I've got, I've got beer on tap. You want a fridge? Um, I find you can you know pick up just I've just got a bulk standard uh, black fridge under my bar. Um, cost me about 100 quid. Uh, you can go out and buy the glass front. It's up to you how you want to design it. You know, um, once you've got once you've got the actual structure up, it's totally up to you what you want to do. It's the world is your oyster. I I tended to go for because I go to Holland, Belgium, German. I try to sort of get. Um, sort of a sort of brown cafe sort of theme where they have the old signs stuck on the wall and the, the beer mats and that sort of thing and all my beer mats are literally like where we go on holiday and we go in these various bars every drink we have right you get a beer mat and we ask we have some beer mats and some of these bars we got to know them and uh, as soon as I walk in and at the end of the evening they say oh I've got something for you and they give me a wad of beer mats or a bar runner or a tray or something for your shed at home, a, a sign, you know, so you can blag a lot of stuff. Um, eBay's a good a good source of buying stuff to kick your, your, your pub shed out. Um, in particular, the, the Vedette um, gumball machine, I got that on eBay. Um, it's, you know, stalls, Ikea, you can pick up stalls dirt cheap from Ikea. Um, the ones I got, I, I got from Ikea, and I painted them up, you know, um, just to match the interior. Um, things that cost money is obviously I painted the floor. Um, that Ronsil Diamond floor paint is not cheap. I'm going to tell you that now. It's about fifty quid a can, um, but it does what it says on the tin. So. Um, the walls, again, I'm using sort of the Ronsel, um sort of outside paint, which I've done all the walls with, um, and the door frames and that. So, you know, paint alone, just to paint this little thing, again, and the stain on the outside, probably done me about 120 quid. You know, it's not cheap, this stuff, unfortunately. Um, and actually, even if you shop around on the internet, you know, um, it's... Pub shed to erect and get out you want, you're not going to do it cheap. In my opinion, you're not going to do it cheap. Um, not something that's going to last you. So, if you want something that lasts, um, in my opinion, you know, spend a little bit more than what your budget is. Go for the best you can afford. Um, don't cut corners. Remember, this is an outside building. This is open to the elements. Um, go with the best you can afford, and yeah, um, enjoy it. Try it. You know, if you if you if you've been thinking about doing a pub uh, a pub shed, um, take the plunge. I, I think it's the best thing you've ever done. You know, friends love coming round mine now. <laughs> you know, you know, you know this scenario. You have them round for dinner. Like, right, and what do you all do? You'll go and sit in a lounge afterwards, the TV's on, that takes centre attention, and people are on their phones, and well, well, nothing, nothing really happens, you just sort of just sit there and talk, you know, watch the TV, no one's having a conversation. Now I have people around for dinner, we sometimes have the dinner in the pub shed, or we'll have the dinner inside and back in the pub shed, and you know, I've got no TV in here, no TV, that was one of the biggest points I wanted with my pub shed, is no TV. In here is the art of conversation. Right, music, music. I've just got one of them um, Bluetooth speakers and my iPad. So I've got, I've got internet in here. I've got a, um, a link down on the internet because that's another thing you want is you've got to have the internet. Um, I've got one of these these links where it, it puts it 
around my ring main of my house and out through the electrics here. Um, most net, most providers provide you with the, the for about 80 quid the actual device to be able to get your internet from your um, from your hub in your house out to your shed. Um, once you've got that in here, music, all you need is your iPad, Bluetooth speaker, away you go. And there's your music sorted for the night. You know, some people buy their jukeboxes and put on the walls and that sort of thing, but you don't need that, especially if you're limited for space. Um, and that's about it, really. So, do now is give you a little, little tour of the, the pub shed, as to speak. Thank you. So as you can see in my pub shed, we have the bar, the spirits, I've got a sub um, beer dispenser and I've also got a perfect draft beer dispenser. As we go around, here is the bar, I've got uh, obviously a fridge underneath this bar. And then we move around to my seating area. So I've got some corner seating there with a table. And I've also got some bar stools that are dotted around. With the walls, I've decorated them with beer mats. Now these beer mats are basically all the places when we go on holiday, when we go in the bars and have a drink, you get the mats and we collect the mats up and basically pin them all over the walls so that's a cheap way of basically uh, decorating your pub shed but also it brings you know if you go on holiday go to these bars and that it brings a bit of sort of um, nostalgia of where you've been in that you know and talking points of when you have people around for your bar same with all the glasses all the different glasses I get I collect um, and they come from the bars that we frequent and the brewery shops that we go and visit when we're abroad you know in, in Germany, Holland, uh, Belgium etc and that again you know they're just put on shelves um, around the bar uh, also little novel things you can buy which is my vedette um, it's a gumball dispenser, but at the moment we've got Dutch licorice in there. You know, these are all things you can sort of, you know, purchase to, to make the, you know, the pub unique to yourself, really. Um, the false beer pumps. Um, I've got a low and brow one here. Um, I quite like the design of the German porcelain ones. But you can get whatever you want, you know. You can pick these up on eBay. Um, that's, where I, that's where you pick up a lot of the stuff, believe it or not, is on eBay. Um, some people go car boot sales, that sort of thing, but it, I can't be asked for that. I'd rather just on, go and click on eBay and pick this stuff up. Um, a lot of stuff I get given by, uh, by bars. One particular bar I go in always gives me um, something every year when I go to Nijmegen. Um, they gave me the, the Delirium um, Bar Runner. I've got a Delirium um, Tray. Um, Things like Eula Schoof, um, Stand, um, always various uh, glasses, um, which is quite good. So there we have it, my pub shed. So there we go, there's my pub shed. Um, if you're thinking about having one, interested about having one, got any questions, comment below, subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up. Um, yeah, so if not, any questions, just comment below. I'll, I'll gladly help try and help you out, um, answer them, that sort of thing. Um, and if you build a pub shed, enjoy it. Enjoy the build, because it is quite enjoyable to build to see it come together. And once it's up, enjoy your nights with your friends in your pub shed. Um, and as I always say, beer is the answer, but I cannot remember the question. Thank you for, thank you for watching. Good night.